We've got Dr. Edwin Vieira on the list. Uh, he's a constitutional scholar. He's argued cases before the Supreme Court. Uh, he's Harvard educated. He's written several books, including Constitutional Homeland Security. Uh, he is the definitive expert on the constitutional militia. The Constitution provides that the law shall be made by the legislative branch, carried out by the executive branch, and interpreted by a third branch of the government, the judicial branch, to make certain no law violates the Constitution. Well, the federal structure is based on division of authority and division of responsibility. The government in Washington, D.C., let me call that the general government, because the federal government includes everything. The federal government is the government in Washington, D.C., the government in the states, the localities, and ultimately the people themselves. The general government is designed to deal with problems involving all of the states, international relations, war and peace, uh, regulation of commerce among the several states, uh, uniform bankruptcy legislation, coining of money so that we'll have a uniform system of money. Right? Uniformity that applies across the board. Well, what has happened is that the people in Washington, D.C. discovered that money would be a good way to gain power. And through their taxing system and their banking system, they have been able to concentrate control over money in Washington. And then they turn around to the states and say, oh, we have this program that we'd like you to participate in. And if you do, we'll fund it. And it's a wonderful control mechanism because it's based upon what? The ultimate, you know, the ultimate vice, I suppose, avarice. Right? We're going to pay you to sell out your own citizens. And the state representatives have said fine. And in many instances, people who are receiving these benefits from Washington have said fine too, not realizing that those benefits are the, what's the picture that comes to my mind? The master puts down the food in front of the dog, and the dog is happy to get the food even though the dog has the choke collar around his neck. Right? Even though the dog is now subject to the master, it's happy to get the food. This bill has special deals for special folks. The Louisiana Purchase, special deal for Florida, special deal for two states in New England, and a special deal for Connecticut. And as much as my friends like to rail on the insurance companies, they give a special deal to Michigan Blue Cross so that they don't have to get the new tax, in, tax increases. Why is that? Because it's special deals for special folks. This bill is unconstitutional. Texas State Attorney General plus 40 or 30 other Attorney Generals will sue the federal government if this bill passes because of special deals for special folks. And also, this bill is unconstitutional because it forces the American purse people to buy a product. Nowhere in the Constitution does the federal government give, have the authority to force you to buy anything, whether it's a insurance, a car, or a box of donuts. What we have in Congress are a bunch of lobbyists who are there uh, making sure that elected officials do the will and do the bidding of corporations. And I mean, this healthcare debate is a great example of that. I mean, the, the insurance industry right now, they're spending $1 million a day to convince people that they need to keep private healthcare insurance companies and that's how we need to uh, have our healthcare run in this country. What does the term sovereignty mean? Well, you can have a nation that's declaring that it's sovereign from an empire or from a nation that it was previously a part of. But at its most basic level, sovereignty or saying I am a sovereign means I am not your property. I am not a slave. And our Declaration of Independence was unique in history where the people created a new government and constituted it to be a protector of their basic rights and freedoms, not democracy, not mob rule, two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner, but a system where the minority as well as the majority was protected. Bills that would protect the American people from the federally sponsored health care fiasco are now getting the support they need. As we call it, the Missouri Freedom of, of uh, Health Care Choice Act. It also is a House joint resolution, and on the Senate side, it's been filed as a Senate joint resolution. 
these resolutions are the type that would result in an amending of our Missouri Constitution. And basically, what these uh, joint resolutions do is, is, is inscribe into our state constitution that the citizens of Missouri will not be compelled or forced by the federal government to uh, have any type of health control mandates from the federal government. This is a brilliant piece, a beautiful piece of, of state sovereignty uh, pushback type legislation. The main point of passing a resolution is we have to define who we are and what we will tolerate. It's their job to be the public servants. They're getting way off task. The support from the citizens was tremendous. I, I, in my eight years in the legislature, I've never seen so many citizens come up to the Capitol uh, to participate in, in a hearing. A properly constituted federal government exists only with the authority of the people and is only granted power from the people. The same thing is true with the various state governments. Their power derives from the consent of the governed. We did it with the extension of uh, unemployment benefits in Missouri this past session, where we had to jump through hoops, actually change our state statutes to be able to get those extensions. We said no. Um, I think what's going to have to happen is collectively, the states are going to have to come together and they're going to have, the legislatures of the states are going to have to say no. Welcome back to The Ed Show. There are tough times on Main Street. Unemployment reached double digits and small businesses are struggling to stay alive. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. We kind of agree with Mal that political power comes largely from the barrel of a gun. I'm very appreciative of the fact that Gary Franchi and William Lewis contacted me and uh, authorized us to post this film at PrisonPlanet.tv so it could subsequently be posted all over the internet on YouTube and other channels. Uh, they spent a lot of money making this film. It's about states' rights, the difference between the republic and a democracy. Uh, this is a film that can really cause a grassroots movement uh, in this nation to rediscover what it is to be an American and to get those checks and balances back over the federal government that only the states under the 10th and 9th Amendment can provide. And to ensure that they can make future documentary films, it's essential that you support them by going to Infowars.com or Don't Tread On Me Movie.com and purchasing Don't Tread On Me Rise of the Republic on DVD with the expanded extras. Plus, you get it in the highest quality. It's great to show friends and family, to have viewing parties, to send to your legislators, uh, your county commissioners, and to people in Congress. The future of this film is in your hands. We've done so much together in the past. I want to thank all of you for your support of independent filmmaking that stands up for this republic. Don't Tread on Me, available at DontTreadOnMeMovie.com or InfoWars.com. Get the DVD today. So they think they own our land. They think they're on our water. They think they're on our children, our education, our money. They completely control all the money supply. Think that we have to pay for all their uh, disorderly conduct and their corruption. And the truth of the matter is that none of these things are under federal control. Legislation that puts teeth into the 10th Amendment resolution in the state of Oklahoma is known as the federal tax escrow account. The federal tax escrow account really has two parts to it. It has first the aspect of it in which it is directing certain federal taxes to be paid to and through the state treasury and then the state will pass that federal tax on to the federal government, the IRS will say. And let's say it's the federal income tax. People start paying their federal income tax to the state treasurer instead of the IRS and then the state treasury will then pass it on to the federal government. So one of the proposals and one of the proposals that we have here in Oklahoma and some other states have is to get, try to get control over that ability that they have to print money, give it out and then take it back or hold it back. So putting teeth in the Tenth Amendment and in the Constitution, one of those solutions is to require those federal funds in the form of taxes, some of them or all of them, to be paid through the state into the state treasury and then the state treasury will pass it on to the federal government unless from time to time we determine that the federal government has committed unconstitutional acts either directly through the use of that 
federal tax or in other ways. And then we can hold that money back as a protection for the citizen, as a protection for the citizen and the state.